In today's episode, we're working on this family minivan, and before I show it to you, this van is actually a good friend of mine. He's actually my barber. He does this magic. I mean, it doesn't look that great right now because it's so hot and humid and I just messed up my hair, but you get the point. Anyway, this family van, we're going to clean up. It's in for our diamond service. So the full interior, the full exterior, and this is one of the cleanest family minivans that we've done in a long time. Usually you know that minivans like this are, hey dad. <laughs> Usually you know that minivans like this are really gross and they take forever to clean and there's stains. I haven't even seen one stain in this yet, like a drink stain or a food stain. Sure, there's crumbs and cookies and Cheez-Its and you know, little starfish, starfish? What are those things called? Goldfish. But that's about it. Guys, if you're enjoying videos like this, and I hope you are, consider subscribing and clicking that bell so you don't miss stuff. They should make them starfish shaped. I know, they should make them starfish. They shouldn't be goldfish, they should be starfish. How awesome would that be? Unless they already have that and we just are out of the loop. This is one of the cleanest family minivans we've done. Sure, it looks kind of bad on the mats here, but it's mostly on the mats, and like this area is probably the worst. So check this out. The entire mat comes right out. And what we're gonna do is blow all of this before we even start washing the exterior. Blow all the cracks and crevices and all these edges out with the tornador and get it all nice and flushed out so that the vacuuming will be that much easier. A minivan can be a challenge sometimes if it's really bad, but that's like the worst of it. Not bad, right? Right. Right. That is disgusting. Ugh. Yeah, we're gonna clean all this out too. Now you notice it does have some paint issues here. See? We just have to be really careful. This has been repainted already. It's, it's actually factory defects that was taken care of by Honda, it still starts to fail after a while. They just don't do a good repair job. You can see back here, this is the worst of it. It's really bad, right? Yeah. So with the pressure washer, we have to be extremely careful around that. And with the wash mitts, just be super, super gentle. So let's blow all this out. That thing is exactly for this. Once we wash all these mats, we can hang them up, we can drape them over this thing. This was built with pressure treated, heavy duty six by sixes and four by fours and two by fours, and then composite decking on the top. And then we put all of these little clips uh, and they're on the back side as well. So it is a great outdoor cleaning station and it can be used for multiple purposes. So yeah, we decided to, to build that because we're building some other stuff in our, uh, in our deck in the back. So this was something that I wanted to add to our workspace outdoors here. So all the mats are pulled out. We're going to degrease these and scrub them down. And again, man, they're just not that bad. Now, as far as the interior goes, this tool right here is one of your best friends for detailers. Check this out. It flushes out all these areas. Oh, there's a goldfish. 
And then we'll go back and, you know, brush these down, steam them and all that stuff. But as far as stains go, I mean, I'm not really seeing them yet, but once I start vacuuming, I might, I might see some stuff. Oh, there's some stuff here, but it's really not too bad. All right, so that's all loosened up in there. So once we get in there to vacuum, it's gonna be so much easier. And I'll still use this tool to get into the cracks and crevices and all of that anyway. But doing this, we have found on some vehicles to get all of the debris and junk out of all the cracks and crevices and carpet before we even start anything. We don't do this to every vehicle. Some do call for it. And for shampoo today, we're going to use the DP wash and wax. Put a couple of ounces in that and we'll go with that with the wash. Now for the products, we're going to use the new products that came in the glove box for this month of July. So we have their Hawaiian Shine, we have their Liquid Carnuba, which we're gonna use for protection today, and then we have their Super Blue. And these are like special edition ones, as you can see by the labels, really nice. It does come with a little nice microfiber, of course that's not the microfiber, um, but it comes with another microfiber that I have over there in this nice applicator block. So we're gonna sample this stuff today. If you wanna get your hands on the monthly glove box subscription, enter code Miranda20, and check out the links down below and you'll get 20% off of your first box. Or if you want to win a box, stay tuned. We're gonna do a giveaway. Now we're using super clean diluted one to four in the electric spray bottle from Car Supplies Warehouse. That thing is awesome. We bought two of them. One we use for degreasing and APCing like this and the other one we use for our iron decon. need some scrubbing. Now this is our pre-wash. This is just a uh, a strong high alkaline shampoo that we're using to pre-clean before we even contact wash the paint. So you let that dwell for just a little bit, not too long, you don't wanna let it dry in the paint, but just enough to get it cleaning and then we're gonna rinse it off. Ew.
so mats are drying up on our tabletop over there. So we pull the vehicle in, let's close the door, crank the AC, and continue on. Now you can see the difference between the clean, dry leather. You can see how it's more of a matte finish than the dirty, shiny leather. Now some people like the shiny leather. Once you put some conditioners, it does get a little shiny, but once it gets too shiny, very, very glossy, that's when you know that's just a buildup of oils and dirt and grease, and you wanna clean that so that it's more of a matte finish, like this. Now you see here, this is damage, creases, you don't want to overly clean that. You don't want to be overly aggressive because these are, you know, wrinkles in the leather or in the vinyl and the more aggressive you clean into these areas, it's gonna wear them away that much faster. This is a, a pressure point, basically. So just be careful when cleaning out these, you know, little cracks and wrinkles. So we are finishing up the interior and it's looking incredible. Now for its age and for the usage, 
don't look too closely because there's some damage, there's some wear. Just finishing up doing a few little touches here and there, making sure all of the door jams and the rubber trimming here. Now you see this. That is actually in all of these little seams. There's like a caulking in all of these seams. And no matter what cleaner, no matter using the steamer or the pressure washer, it doesn't matter. You can't get all of that out. It's almost like a mildew that's into the um, you know, caulking of all of these seams. So the only thing you could do is clean all around it, clean the best you can. If it doesn't come out with everything that you have, then don't drive yourself nuts. Understand that sometimes these areas here do not come clean. It's the age of the car and it's just a buildup on this material here that it just does not come up. So there's nothing you can do about it. Clean the best that you can. But we're getting all these rubber seams, all these edges nice and clean as best as we can, getting into all these areas, and it is looking fantastic. Now, the great thing about this job is we didn't have to pull out the extractor. We simply steamed everything. We scrubbed and steamed and used that all-purpose cleaner called the Kraken, which is an awesome all-purpose cleaner to use for the interior. And it's not a super high pH, which is great. It's around a 9 or 10-ish, and... That's not going to be a super high pH, so it's totally safe to use for the interior as well as the exterior. But today I used it on everything on the interior and it cleaned up incredibly well. A few little stains on the carpets here and there, and they were lightened up, but they won't come out. The extractor won't touch them. Nothing touches them. So those are just stains that are there permanently. The only way to get them out is to re-dye the carpet. And that's why there are reconditioning shops to do that type of thing, if the customer wants that. But Everything is steam cleaned, looking great, and it's, it's all dry to the touch now because when you steam instead of extract, everything dries faster. There's no wicking, and your job comes out, I think sometimes, even better than if you were just to extract everything because you run into some problems with the extractor with wicking and oversaturating. Now we're going to start on the exterior. Wifey is hitting all of the trim with the Meguiar's. It's actually paint protect. This is an old bottle discontinued product unfortunately but we still have a little bit of it but it's great for trim so wifey's going to use it on all of the exterior trim and then we're going to use that carnauba liquid wax from jack's wax on all the paint oh wait you missed a spot right there there you go nice now we have two exterior products. We're gonna use this. This is the Liquid Carnauba Wax from Jack's Wax. We also have their Hawaiian Shine, which is a quick detailer and it's fortified with some protection as well. So this you can use if there's any smearing or any missed spots, you go back over it with this and kind of top it. Or you can use this uh, after you wash it each time to maintain the protection. So these do work hand in hand. But let's focus on this stuff right now. I'm going to show how you can apply it by hand and then my favorite way of applying it. So the glove box does come with the little applicator here, a nice soft microfiber applicator. And this stuff is very liquidy, it's like a spray. It, it does come with a little you know, uh, top to squeeze it onto the applicator, but it's too liquidy. So I put a trigger on it. Whoops. So shake it up because it does separate, so you wanna shake it up. I'm going to apply, oh yeah, look how thin and watery it is, so. Spray tip, the best idea. And just apply it in circular or straight motions, doesn't matter. And it hazes over almost immediately, very quick. So the traditional way of applying a wax like this, you can see the streakiness, the hazing, it's starting to happen and I didn't apply anything on here. So you can see that, and of course, that's just paint damage, just ignore that. So now with the towel that was provided, let's go ahead and wipe it off. Oh yeah, so I mean it only took like a minute or two to dry. And then you can wipe it right off. And of course, when it does that, when it dries to a haze, there's a little bit of resistance when wiping it. But then, you flip the towel over, and all right, that's pretty awesome. But, here's my favorite way of applying liquid waxes. I like to apply waxes and sealants with a little polisher. It can be either this one, or it can be my larger SPTA cordless, doesn't matter, or any 
you know, dual action polisher, you can do this. Just put it on a low speed, like three or four, um, or even two, that's fine. I like to run it just a little faster because you get a little bit of polishing when you're using a pad like this. It's the mechanical action of the pad and the liquid combined that actually glosses up and kind of lightly polishes the paint. So, same thing, just mist it onto the pad like so. The easy part, you just go over the area. This applies it very thin and very efficiently. So this is great for mobile guys, these old handheld polishers and waxes like this. So when you're armed with your wax in hand and your little polisher like this, you can fly around the vehicle very quickly. The Odyssey is now complete. Let's take a quick look around. Now we did do the engine because it was pretty gross and I wanted to clean up all of the cowl area so it was degreased, it was all brushed down, and then we used that Hawaiian shine and shined up all the painted parts under here, cleaning them really nicely. And then we used 303 Aerospace Protectant for all of the plastics so that should look really nice for a long time and be easier to clean. You can actually get the engine wet in here, it's okay, you can even just take your hose and Hose it down, get all the dust off of it, and then just blow dry it and towel it down. And if the plastics start to fade a little bit, just use some uh, 303 or a plastic dressing and spray it on, let it soak in. You can even have the engine on for a little bit. And then you'll take your towel and go back through and wipe down any areas that have a little bit of excess. But even so, that will melt into the plastics eventually and it will look really, really nice. As far as the rest of it goes, beautiful. All of the edges and trim pieces are nice and clean and all dressed up, including the cowl. And as we look at the interior, we just put all the mats back in. We did spray the mats down with the stoner's trim shine. Now when you do that, you have to make sure that you wipe everything down really, really well. Now, I have these WeatherTech mats in our vehicle as well. And when you first get them, when they're brand new, they are slippery, and then they kind of wear in, or wear down, I should say, and then become, you know, a little bit more grippy, but they just don't look good. Now, I did use the uh, McKee's Rejuvenator, but it doesn't necessarily restore it. So, for faded WeatherTech mats, I will spray them all down with stoners, let it soak in as we're doing the rest of the vehicle. It's one of the first things we do, and then wipe it all down. So you can see, it looks really, really nice. And is it going to be slippery? Mm, actually, not really. Not too bad at all. Now, if you put your feet in there, yeah, you will get a little bit of that slipperyage. Slipperyage? Slipperage? Slipperage? Slipperiness. But just like new mats, it will wear down. So don't worry about that. But always inform the customer anyway. If you are worried about that with the Stoner's Trim Shine, then take a damp rag and wipe it all down. But you risk kind of removing some of that restoring properties and it'll end up looking dull again. But again, just inform your customer if that's something that they want. So that's when good communication really comes into play. Let your customers know if they want that or not. As far as all the vinyl and leather, oh man, it looks so good. 
nice and fresh. Mm. All the seats were of course pulled out and everything was cleaned under there. All of these areas around the doors, all the rubber trimming was also protected. So you can use 303 or any other water-based or even solvent-based, but I like water-based protectants on all the rubber trim here. Same goes for back here, all nice and clean. Remember we talked about those little uh, edges here? That stuff will not come out, but all these edges are nice and clean. Looking beautiful. Now we use that dressing from Jack's Wax on the tires. It doesn't necessarily give a super high gloss unless you want it. If you want to spray it directly on and leave it, you'll get high gloss, but you'll also get sling. So the way we apply it, either with a brush or with a little applicator, it soaks into, into the tire and it, it conditions it more than it glosses it all up. You don't necessarily want high, high gloss on tires because again, you're gonna deal with sling but if it's your preference, again, let the customer know. If you want high gloss, you're going to have to deal with sling on your paint. Um, and just inform them, educate them about that. Wheels look incredible. They were deep cleaned with a rapid decon. All the iron particles were removed. You saw how it kind of turned purple. That purple reaction means that it is reacting with the brake particles, the brake dust or the iron particles, and dissolving them. Very, very cool. So really nice, deep clean wheels. All right, my friends, this one is done. Customer's gonna be here in about an hour or so to pick it up, and I think he's gonna be super happy. Now, of course, this one, again, was a friend of mine. He's actually my barber, and uh, I've actually been going to him for a couple of years, so this is his family hauler, his kid hauler. And uh, it was a pleasure working on it for him and making this thing look amazing, so you are welcome. Hope you enjoyed the video. And for the rest of you, I hope you enjoyed the video as well. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. If you're interested in any of the products, especially the Jax Wax products in the glove box for July, then check out the links down below. You can grab yourself a box and enter code Miranda20 and you'll get 20% off. Or you can win a box. So what I needed to do is go to this video, it will be up in the corner, and tell me what product did we use to remove the bug etching on the hood of that vehicle. So it was a maintenance wash on a ceramic coated vehicle. What product did we use to remove the bug etching? So answer that down below in this video and hashtag it detail glove box. So you have to hashtag it detail glove box. That way I know that's how I pick the winner and it has to be the correct answer. And then in about a week's time or so, I am going to announce the winner on Instagram. Now don't worry, if you don't have Instagram, don't worry. If you win, I'm going to reach out to you in the comment in this video and let you know that you won. So ignore any of those other uh, messages that may come in that's not from me and said, you won, you won, they're scams. So ignore those, I try to catch those if I can, but if you catch them, you can report them, I believe, also, or flag them or report them. They're scams. You can tell it's a scam. It's not from me. It leads you to a link to go somewhere else. I don't do that. All you do is just email me. I'll put my email address and you email me and I'll just let you know that you won. You will get a direct message or a comment from me directly saying to email me. So once again, I hope everyone enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss stuff. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.